Hey, I'm Sean. And I'm MJ. And today we're looking at guiding systems like maps and GPSs and how well we use them. Oh, <laughs> I have a story of a friend okay. who was on a trip and they didn't have a GPS. Shoot. So the bus driver got lost. Okay. Um, and they were driving and driving and driving. The whole bus. The whole bus. Oh, man. And sooner or later, they were in the middle of nowhere. And you know, everyone on the bus ride, they were chilling, they were drinking their sodas, drinking their water. And you know, when you drink something, sooner or later you gotta go. Oh no. <laughs> and so it got to the point where someone had to tell the bus driver, we gotta stop. And they were, all they had was a field. So they went in a field? They went in a field. Shoot, that just goes to show how important guiding systems are. On the topic of guiding systems, the Holy Spirit can help guide us. Let's check out today's God story and see what this looks like. Did you know that a shrimp's heart is in its head? Hi everyone, Dawn here. Have you ever been in a situation where you're at an event and you look across the room and you see someone who looks a little shy, um, a little unapproachable, maybe like they don't wanna be there, but you have this prompting within you to just go over and say hi. Howdy. Sometimes when we're just willing to go where God leads us, the Holy Spirit will give us the rest of what we need. Today's big idea is that the Holy Spirit guides us. And today we're gonna to talk about a guy named Philip who followed that inner prompting and went exactly where God led him and was able to share the good news of Jesus. The New Testament has two Philips. This Philip is not Philip the disciple, but he's Philip the evangelist. And the Holy Spirit guided him on where he should go and what he should say. At this time, Christians were being put in prison, they were being hurt, they were even being killed. They were scattered all over the place, but wherever they went, they still shared the message of Jesus. Philip was one of those Christians. He went to Samaria and was sharing the message of Jesus. And the crowds listened to him, and they saw the signs that he did, and Peter and John came to visit him and to help him. While he was there, this is what happened. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Go south to the desert road, he said. It's the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip started out. On his way, he met an Ethiopian official. The man had an important position in charge of all the wealth of the Kandake. Kandake means queen of Ethiopia. This official had gone to Jerusalem to worship. On his way home, he was sitting in his chariot. He was reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The Holy Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot, stand near it. So Philip ran up to the chariot. He heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said. I need someone to explain it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Philip is right where God wants him to be. Here's a man who has some questions and he is right there to answer them. The man heard and believed. And he looked at Philip and he said, I want to be baptized. And being baptized is our way as Christ followers of saying, I'm all in and I want to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. So Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. The official did not see him again. He went on his way full of joy. The Holy Spirit suddenly took Philip away. Now that line may be a little confusing. Like, did he make a mad dash out of there? Or was he teleported to another location? <laughs> I don't know. But what I do know is that the Holy Spirit was working in and through Philip and guiding him as he shared the message of Jesus. And that is so cool. And the Holy Spirit wants to guide us too. When we're willing to say, God, help me to listen, help me to follow, help me to do and be what and who you want me to be, God will use each of us in cool ways. So do you remember at the beginning when I asked you if you've ever felt prompted to approach someone you didn't know, to say hi, someone who may seem shy, may seem alone, that might be God's opportunity to use you in an amazing way. That brings me back to our big idea for today. The Holy Spirit guides us. I'm Duan, and that's our God story for today. I'm looking forward to seeing you for another one. The Holy Spirit can guide us in many different ways, and it may not be as specific as Philip's story. 
It can be a nudge to contact someone or find something you forgot, or simply just a feeling that you shouldn't do something. Yeah, and I find that the Holy Spirit often guides us in gentle ways, and sometimes that just looks like having us double check something. Let's check out Natalie's story and see what this looks like for her. In other news, tonight we want to emphasize the importance of wearing a helmet when riding a bike. According to police, the death of Paul Smith could have been prevented had he worn a helmet while biking late Saturday afternoon. Smith was struck by a vehicle and was rushed to hospital. He died in hospital early on Sunday morning and leaves behind his wife and two young children. That could have been me. That could have totally been me. I'm Natalie Martin. I love to bike and I'm lucky to be here to share that with you. So I grew up here, I've lived here since I was two. I like to spend a lot of time with friends biking to the store, biking around town, biking to uh, the schoolyard. I had a lot of great friends and family growing up, uh, but sometimes I still felt lonely. Um, and I don't think people really knew that growing up. So when I was nine years old, one day after school, I decided to um, go grab a snack at the corner store. I uh, grabbed my bike. I decided I won't bother with the helmet today. Um, I walked partway down my driveway and I just had this distinct, um, really heavy, noticeable feeling that I needed to go put on my helmet. Um, so I turned back, put on my helmet, and then I went on my way to the store. Uh, I turned off my street and I decided to cross the road, but I did that without checking over my shoulder. And there was actually a pickup truck coming with a trailer on the back of it. Um, I ended up running into the truck. The trailer knocked me off my bike. I hit my head on the trailer. I was rushed to the hospital. Um, when we got to the hospital, they told my parents that without the helmet, I most likely would have died or gotten major brain injury, brain damage. Um, and yeah, my life would have been totally different. So the recovery process was really hard. It was a really long process, um, but I really leaned on um, the support of my family, the support of my really close friends. So I was in the hospital for two and a half weeks. Uh, mostly healing my pelvis, some of the scrapes and bruises I had. Um, my pelvis, actually, they thought when I got there might need screws to hold it together, because it actually uh, came apart like this and then like this. Um, so they thought they might need screws to kind of like fuse it back together. Um, in the end, I didn't have to have that. Um, it healed enough on its own. Um, I couldn't do a lot in that time, but. Uh, my friends were great, and they would come over, do whatever I could do. And yeah, God really used that experience to show me the close relationships in my life. After I was recovered a lot more, my injuries were healed. My parents were really supportive and really uh, helpful in getting me back out there on a bike. Um, roads were really scary for me for quite a while. Um, but they were great about helping me get over that fear. So my parents are both avid cyclists. Um, they really love it, so um, we would go out biking together a lot. We actually all did a big bike race in New York City together. I've learned a lot through the situation. I've learned that even though um, circumstances can be hard, times can be tough, uh, it's really important to get back at it, try again, start again. Um, God loves you, the people around you love you, and um, yeah, it's really important to just get back at it and don't give up. So that day when I felt that nudging that I, I really should put on my helmet, um, I now know that that was the Holy Spirit um, wanting to protect me from that. And just like that, um, through God we have the helmet of salvation. 
God wants to protect us, God loves us, and He loves us no matter what. That was unreal. Natalie's story really reminded me of how important it is to be sensitive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It can truly change your life. Yeah, and in this case, it saved Natalie's life. Mm -hmm. But it can vary from moment to moment, from person to person. What I take from this is I want to get those nudges. I want to receive the guidance, and I want to be close to the Holy Spirit and to live in the fullness of what He has for me. Yeah, absolutely. And we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us to recognize and follow His voice. It can help us to live a truly fulfilling life. I love that. Okay, let's break into small groups and see what this looks like in our lives. 